Hello, fourth year comm students. How are you? Don't answer that. This is pre recorded and I cannot hear you. Welcome to Kevin Johnson's Intra Peace Project Presentation 2012 by me, Kevin Johnson. And cue music. Now that you are all warmed up from the dancing I assume you were just doing, I can begin. I'm going to be covering several things here, so you better pay attention. There may be a quiz at the end. First, I'm going to cover the concept of intrapersonal nonviolence. I know we are all comm students here, so don't you worry. I will do this in the least patronizing way possible. Next, I'll go over exactly what I did for this project, and it is pretty darn impressive. So, stick around for that. The goals of the project come next. There's a personal anecdote in there, which I'm sure you will all love because it's about me, Kevin. And we wrap everything up with the results of the project, which are shown through line graphs, I think. Yeah, line graphs. So, don't want to leave early, but you might, you might miss some line graphs. So, here we go, starting presentation now. Intrapersonal nonviolence? What is that? Excellent question, person who is definitely not just me with a slightly altered voice. It just so happens that this segment explains just that. Wow, this would have been a great way to introduce that segment. It sure would, me. I mean, not me. It sure would. So let's take a gander at the first part of the term. Can anyone tell me what intrapersonal means? How about you, Ben? Well then, why did you put your hand up? Anyone else? Ah, yes, Kevin. Exactly! You are clearly much smarter and more attractive than Ben. So, intrapersonal nonviolence suggests that one can commit intrapersonal violence. But what would this violence consist of? Like with all violence, there are two basic types, active and inactive. Both of these types can be committed intrapersonally. Eating horrible foods, lack of exercise, excessive drinking, smoking, stress, all of these are intrapersonally violent acts. I'm sure many of us are guilty of a lot of these. I'm looking at you, sh oh, I can't say their name. Well, you know who you are. The non-part of this non-violence is simply an act of opposing whatever violence you happen to be committing upon yourself, whether it be through action or inaction. For me, this violence came in the form of my diet and exercise, if you could call them that. And uh, that, my friends, is the foundation for this project. In order to achieve inner peace and possibly psychic powers, I decided to tackle the health aspects of my intrapersonal violence. To do this, I created a diet and fitness plan that I carried out over six weeks. I have to be clear here. The diet and exercise program I underwent were not intense. If they were, I would have died. The reason I would have died is that before beginning this project, my exercise consisted entirely of walking to the bus and and walking to the bus. Don't get me wrong, there was a time when exercise was part of my life, but then university happened and health got forgotten somewhere along the way. On the diet side of things, I was not very specific and I did not record every little thing that I ate. I wanted this diet to be practical and I have no money at all. So rather than decide I needed to intake a specific amount of protein and whatnot every day, I simply made my diet about what I was not going to eat. I should clarify on this as well. Before this program, my eating habits would make a pig blush. I ate the worst garbage imaginable, pretty much exclusively. This was not because I do not like real food, but because I am, well, I'm lazy. And it seemed a lot easier to throw a hot pocket in the microwave than to cook some chicken. Either way, for six weeks, I was very strict with what I put into my body. No unnecessary sugar, no microwavable meals, no fast food, nothing that can be delivered to your door, etc. Okay, now for the exercise. I hate exercise, or I guess I should say I hated it. I hated warming up, I hated stretching, I hated actually doing the exercise, and I hated how it felt afterwards. Thankfully, over the course of this project, the hate simmered to a minor resentment, eventually becoming indifference, and by the end I found myself almost looking forward to my next workout. Almost. The workout itself was as simple as a workout could be, consisting of only exercises that could be done from home, with no equipment. I ended up doing the 100 push-ups, 200 sit-ups, and 200 squats programs. These programs were perfect for me for several reasons. One, they are completely free. Two, they start very slow. And three, each workout takes very little time to do. 
Either way, I was able to get through the three programs simultaneously, and while I am not now able to do 100 push-ups, 200 sit-ups, or 200 squats, the results that I saw were satisfying enough for me. So now you're all thinking to yourselves that this guy just wanted to start exercising and eating right and simply use this assignment as an excuse to get into better shape. Well, I would like you all to know that I am deeply offended by your hypothetical accusations. Please don't let it happen again. Anyways, while I would not mind getting into excellent shape, six weeks simply would not cut it. This assignment was a lot more about the psychological aspects of fitness than the physical. So in short, the goal of this assignment was not to turn into this. Although I assure you that this is an unedited photo of my banging bod and killer kerchief. This was merely a side product of my true goal, dealing with anxiety. I know what you're thinking. How can someone as attractive and brilliant as you have anxiety issues? Well, I looked it up and it turns out that anxiety is based on fancy brain chemicals. Anyone can suffer from anxiety, even people with incredible Photoshop skills. In reality, I have suffered from anxiety for as long as I can remember. I'm usually able to keep it under control, but it is undeniable that it impacts my day-to-day -day life, especially when external stress comes into play. I would like to show you an image, but first I must warn you, it is not for the squeamish or for the faint of heart. Ugh. This horrible creature that you are looking at was named Zombie Kevin by Sir Robert Sudak. He emerges at the end of each semester. Zombie Kevin does not sleep. He does not eat. He rarely even blinks. He only worries. So I finally gave in and I went to the doctor to ask for some help to reduce my anxiety. My doctor said I have several options, drugs being one and fitness the other. I was informed that by eating well and exercising I can reduce my anxiety a great deal. I thought, why not? Might as well give health a shot before drugs. Now you might realize that it is currently the end of the semester and I do not look like a zombie at all. I actually look quite amazing. What could that possibly mean? Every day during my six week program I recorded my general mood, energy level, and anxiety level on a scale from one lowest to ten highest. And that brings us to the time I'm sure you've all been waiting for. Remember those line graphs I promised you? Well your patience has finally paid off. Here they come. Woo! We love your line graphs! Yay! Okay, so maybe that was a little anticlimactic. Well, let's take a look anyways. Energy level went up a bit, nothing too drastic. Uh, general mood stayed pretty much the same, a little bit of an increase, but nothing to write home about. But, but wait, what's this? Could it be? Anxiety saw a drastic drop. I mean, there are still those anxiety peaks in there, but, but a fairly impressive drop nonetheless. Zombie Kevin might not be dead, but he, he has been weakened. Well, there you go, that's the end. Seriously, that's it. This is just a short presentation, after all. You want more? Okay, fine. I'm making a website for the final submission, and, and I'll send everyone a link when it's complete. Happy? No? Well, what else can I do? Oh, I know what you want. Alright, one last time, but only because I love you.